Don't worry everyone, you can relax on this one. I'm giving it a recommendation. Shit, well on that note, there's no need to carry on. Well, stay tuned for more True Review videos coming up in... What's this? This just in... True Review, what the f*** do you think you're playing at? F***ing finish the video that you started. Christ, so if you're gonna be like that, I suppose I must then. What's with everyone these days? You think we're living in some sort of Big Brother state, with all the viewers telling me what to do. And on that poor attempt at connecting the intro with the theme of the game, here we have the game Papers, Please. Well, trust Naughty Dog to make something that's completely boring, entertaining in video game form. Actually, now that I think about it, Naughty Dog stopped making things fun after the Crash Bandicoot series, and started making everything depressing. Still good stuff, mind you, but oh my god, please blow my brains out depressing. With the new Indiana Jones film, they made the Uncharted series. With the generic zombie apocalypse genre, they made The Last of Us. And now with Border Control, they didn't even do anything because it wasn't Naughty Dog that made Papers, Please. It was actually the Pope. Not the Pope, though if the Pope did make a video game, I'd totally play the shit out of it. Papers, Please was actually made by former Naughty Dog developer Lucas Pope, who after going through Passport Control once thought, wouldn't it be fun to play as that guy behind the desk? Yes, that guy who's playing the violin with a razor blade on his wrists, in an alternative, fictional, dystopian Soviet country. And here's where the game comes into play, if you pardon the pun. You play the part of a dude who's won the proletariat lottery and given a job that he didn't ask for, for next to no money at all. You spend all day in the passport booth, admitting in the master race and rejecting the rest of the foreign scum, whilst taking a few seconds between each counter to play the violin on your wrist with a dull razor blade. By the time I finished my first playthrough of this game, I was ready to call it a lovely little game, but I think lovely is the wrong word. More like f***ing depressing, but this is actually a good thing. At the start, you'll just have to make sure that everyone's passport is in order, or even just turn away the dirty foreigners. But as you progress through the levels, the gameplay gets way more difficult. As new rules are set, you'll have to cross-check several pieces of documentation from each person, and sometimes they'd be missing something, or what they've got is forged, and it's not always obvious either. They might be terrorists with bombs strapped to them, but they won't be giving anything away. Or do what they do in LA Noir, where you can tell if someone's lying because their left eye has gone into a spasm attack, and you'll need to be able to pick up on all of this. But then you'll come across moral choices too. Though a dude might have his shit in order who's emigrating to your motherland, his wife's shit might not be in order, meaning that you shouldn't be letting her in. But if you don't let her in, then she'll have to return to her country and get persecuted. But if you do accept her in, then you'll get punished with a pay deduction, which you can't afford because your sick wife needs medication, and no one in the home has had anything to eat for the last few days. God, I forgot for a second just how depressing this game is. And I love it. I needed the money so badly that I couldn't have rejected that woman any quicker, and I think I told her to f*** off as well, which just shows you how emotionally detached I was from what's happening. So I must be like, Super Passport Controller Man or something. There's also a strange cult that will try to recruit you in taking down the government, and it's really up to you what you do. For example, I turned them down the entire time, but then they randomly gave me a thousand dollars. And I was surprised that I was getting paid in US dollars, because I was getting the Soviet vibe in this game, but hey, whatever. I used that money to feed, warm, and cure my family, got two upgrades to my desk, and then moved my family into a Class 7 apartment, which I'd imagine would have slightly less rats in it, and much less babushka in it. But then it turns out that my neighbours were the f***ing welfare police, and didn't take too kindly to my looking after my family, and had me reported, to which I ended up getting thrown in jail, despite no one ever learning where I got that money from. What this game comes down to is how much of your humanity you're willing to sacrifice to keep your family alive. Well seeing as none of them ever get a job to help out ever, they're not f***ing much it seems. As the levels go on, you'll need to spend a few more seconds each time someone approaches the desk, just to go over all the documentation, so to make sure that everything is in order. But then again this is time wasted because you'll get paid on how many people you deal with per day. But if you f*** up, then you have your pay deducted, so you need to spend time making sure that you haven't missed anything. But then you're taking too long and not dealing with enough people- Arrgh! It's a vicious cycle! I was relieved when the occasional psycho came up to the desk with what looks like a passport drawn on a napkin, and I just smiled like you would to a child that's just pooed itself, and mockingly went for the red rejection stamp. The problem is, no matter how well you do, you will always be struggling. If you're doing shit, then you'll be having a hard time. If you're doing well, then you'll be struggling to keep afloat. 
and I swear that Tom Nook is the landlord because the rent keeps inexplicably going up with inflation whilst your pay does not. Also, it costs $10 to heat the flat and $20 to feed the family per day. No, that's not per week, that's per day. Okay, $20 per day I can understand if your wife is cooking fucking gourmet lobster frittata all the time and not giving two shits about what money's left to heat the house. What's that? Little Timmy is sick again? Sorry, we haven't got any money for medicine, but I know what will help. How about some of Mama's homemade caviar dumplings in champagne? You know what? Heating the house would also help fight off bugs too, which for $10 a day must be the size of the space needle, but I'm guessing that it's not, and it's just a grey, one-roomed apartment with seven other families living it. So you guys might have a draft in there. Just saying. Another thing I don't get is the dude who lets you know if you've messed up when checking someone through. Now, at some point, you'll make a mistake, and in each level, it's three strikes and say goodbye to $5 of today's paycheck. Which might as well be today's paycheck. But each time you get something wrong, you'll receive a message from some faceless dude behind you, telling you exactly what you got wrong. Now, this does help in the way of kicking you up the arse and making sure you're doing your job properly, but I'm getting the impression that this other dude could do this job better than me. When this job was created, did management go, Right, I think we need two positions to operate border control. One person to man the control booth and do the job, and another to do the job properly. I'm wondering why exactly it is that I still have a job. Well, I shouldn't complain. I'm still taking home $10 a day. Hi honey, I'm home. So, which do you prefer we have tonight? Food or heating? And she goes, oh, only $10? Hmm, that's not much. That'll only get us a tapas board if we're lucky. You know what, there should be an option to have your family deported in this game. That's the only thing that's missing here. That and a gangster version called Bitch Please. I was going to go with the M words in that joke, but that would have just attracted a load of naggers. What? I said naggers, not- I swear